Praise the Lord, everyone. I'm Rico Hill, the host of From Sickness to Health. And today, I'd like to begin the program with a quote from the psalmist David, who said in Psalm 92, verses 1 and 2, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to see his loving kindness in the morning. Yeah, after that first cup of coffee. Coffee. <laughs> yeah, I need it. It's my quick pick-me-up to get me going in the morning. I want some right now. Well, you, you can't have any right now because we have a program. Oh, how I love caffeine and my people, we love it. Now, we as in your people, me and you, who's, who's we? My people all around the world. We have clearly spoken about this delicious stuff. In today's program, we're gonna let the facts speak and perhaps those facts can actually help you and your people. But of course, I know what's gonna happen. Here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna to try to hide the truth, aren't you? Nope, don't have to hide the truth because my people love this stuff so much that they can't live without it, no matter what you say. Watch me get them excited. You know what? I got an idea. Caffeine, 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 caffeine. Look, caffeine, while he's chanting, caffeine, we're gonna go ahead caffeine, and we're gonna share some information with you caffeine, today caffeine, that is going to show you the most widely caffeine, used legal caffeine, drug in the world. Caffeine, coffee. Caffeine, Stay tuned. Caffeine, Roll it. Caffeine, caffeine. Welcome and thank you for joining us here in the studio of From Sickness to Health. I'm joined once again with a wonderful couple of people. My guests, uh, Dr. Jim Saeed, um, board certified chiropractor and naturopathic doctor. And we're happy to have with us once again, Lydia Calhoun, who is an ex-pharmaceutical uh, executive. And um, again, we're gonna talk about something that kind of relates to drugs, but this time, it's a, it's a legal drug, the world's most um, widely used legal drug, and uh, we're going to get some insights from both of you today. So welcome Good. to the program. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Good again. to have you. Okay, so we're talking about coffee. Mm. Don't you love coffee? You know, I, I, was, <laughs> I was excited to have uh, Lydia join us today because you're going to find this fascinating, but... If there was ever a time when someone has never, ever had a cup of coffee, you'd have to really search far and wide. But Liddy has never had a cup of coffee a day in her life. That's true. I've never even tasted it. She's never tasted it. So I thought, um, so what do you have to say about coffee? <laughs> Well, I don't need it. I wake up very alert in the morning, and I have all the energy I need when I step out of bed. And we're going to, in this program, we're going to find out why she has that energy, why she wakes up with a smile and she doesn't need coffee to do it. So I think that's a good reason to have you on the program today. But Dr. Saeed, we're going to look at this from the standpoint of it being um, almost like self-medicating. Is that right? That's accurate. Okay, so coffee is a self-medicator. A self that's right. And everyone's using it, but they don't fully know what they're doing when they're doing it, do no, they? No, it's just automatic. They reach for the cup of coffee to make up for what their body isn't able to do in the morning. What their body isn't. Now, why isn't their body okay. able to do it? Here's the idea. The body's energy is regulated by a hormone. That hormone comes from the adrenal glands, the stress glands of the body. The hormone is called cortisol. Mm -hmm. Now, cortisol mm -hmm. does two very specific things. Cortisol maintains glucose, which is sugar, to the brain to keep the brain alive. Bottom line, your brain runs on a fuel called glucose, which is a kind of sugar. But it's not the sugar you eat, it's the sugar you use from the body. Now, if the brain's under stress, I call that a runaway locomotive. Its demand for fuel is constant. 
So you're shoving coal into the engine to keep it going. If you run out of coal, then what? The body uses its store of glucose in the liver. It's called glycogen. Mm -hmm. It uses up that store and the brain says, okay, I need more, feed me. The body says, I don't have any more glycogen or sugar to feed you. So the brain says, all right, I know just what to do. It sends a releasing trigger to the adrenals to pump out cortisol. Mm -hmm. Cortisol circulates through the body and it tears down protein and oh. converts that to glucose, to sugar. It's tearing down, it's, so it's disrupting the natural physiology and function of the body yes. in a way that is, that is detrimental to this wonderful instrument that God has exactly. given us. Exactly, it's like taking the floorboards out of the caboose to feed the engine. Whoa, that's a good analogy, I like that. Let's hold on to that thought, All right. you know, because the, we don't want to be uh, uh, accused of being unfair to those who love their coffee, <laughs> right? So let's go join Sickness and uh, see what he has to say about uh, this, this strange brew. Okay. Let's take a look. I don't know about you, but I need a potent coffee picker-upper to get me going in the morning. I'm talking caffeine. And to get mine, I don't just drink one cup. I drink two cups at the same time. You should try it. You know, I love my addiction. I mean, I love my taste for coffee. It's amazing. A lot of people do. I mean, it's just savory. And did you know that it's the most sought after commodity in the entire world? More than sugar, crude oil, corn, or even gold. That's right. It's valuable and it's important to me. I love the flavors. I love the smell. And I think you should too. I'm going to have another one of these in about 30 minutes. And I can hardly wait. Back to you, Rico. You know, Chris, uh, if there was any facts in what he said, it is a fact that, that coffee is the number two commodity in the world mm. after crude oil. Mm. Can wow. you imagine it? And, you know, oh. above gold and silver and all the different grain products that we use in abundance. Yeah. No, no, no. It's coffee. Mm. Mm. So, so this, this, people love it. We can't deny that. And it, you know, he did say it, it smells great. And it does stimulate you in the morning just by smelling it. What can be so bad about it? Well, before we went to <laughs> sickness, we talked about it's disrupting the natural the natural function of the body. Yeah? yeah? You, you wanted to continue though. I wanted to hear more about this whole physiology and how it is, it's, it's doing more than just, uh, you know, uh, sort of hijacking protein. It's, it's doing something to the heart, it's doing something to the stomach, and we're gonna look at a clip that shows that it's actually doing something to your brain. Yes. Mm. But continue, Doc. So what happens now is you tear down protein so you now decrease the lean body mass of the body, <clears throat> so now you increase the fat body mass. So as cortisol is surging, you're literally increasing fat stores as you, as you strip away protein and the lean body mass of the body. Okay, let me, let me make sure that we understand that. So as you are uh, disrupting protein, you're creating another environment and that's fat stores. So yes. are we talking about causing people to gain weight? causing people's cholesterol to, uh, to be raised? Do, what is, what are, what's happening by creating these fat stores? That's unquote. what happens. I call coffee liquid sandpaper. Oh, now there's an image. Liquid sandpaper? And the damage that it's doing to the system, including the cardiovascular system and the liver. So, it's, I mean, when we, when we think of sandpaper, we think of something that is actually abrasive. stripping away. It's abrasive. It's removing something. Yes. A surface of something of the surface of what is being stripped away. It's, in, it's causing an inflammatory reaction. So yes. every time a person goes to their, their coffee place of choice mm -hmm. and, or at home and they have some of this, this brew, they're actually causing an inflamed situation in their body? Yes. That's dangerous. Now, I think we need to remind people why that's dangerous. Because inflammation generates scar tissue. Scar tissue limits function and motion and health. It damages inside the artery. It affects the liver adversely. It can affect joints adversely. 
This is the consequence of drinking this drug. But here's why people drink it. Over time, when the body is adapting to stress, the cortisol levels go down because the liver, the adrenals, can't produce the cortisol because they fatigue. So then people reach for the coffee to make up for the, what the adrenals aren't providing. So they use coffee to stimulate them and pick them up in the morning instead of cortisol. Now, cortisol has a daily rhythm. Cortisol is high in the morning and drops down to low at night. So we're effective in adapting in the morning and we're ready to go to sleep at night and recover and repair. Mm -hmm. When people fatigue their adrenals, the opposite occurs. They ruin the adrenal capacity to produce cortisol in the morning, so they reach for coffee to make up the difference. And then cortisol rises at night and they can't sleep. They can't sleep. So when people can't sleep, this is causing a, a whole nother host of problems. Yes, because then the adrenals have to produce cortisol at night to raise the cortisol from night to morning to reduce inflammation in the body from the previous day's stress. This sounds to me like people are sleeping, but they're stressed while they're sleeping. Yes. Can in, you imagine that? In fact, we, we call it hyperadaptosis. We become addicted to stress. So the body's in stress. Who likes stress, though? We no, people don't enjoy stress, but you're saying that when we're drinking coffee, we're actually creating an environment where we are addicted to stress? Yes, we're not at rest in our hearts. Okay, let's, let's, I, I want to get Lydia in on yeah. this because we're about to show a clip uh. that is going to really speak to what happens physiologically when we drink coffee. Let's mm -hmm. take a look at this clip. This is going to, this is going to blow you away. Let's take a look. Where, from 320 milligrams in a Starbucks Cafe Grande, about the max you should have in a day, to energy drinks, to sodas, now even inhalable, 100 milligrams in an instant. But could that daily dose of caffeine be changing your brain? We turn to researchers at Wake Forest in North Carolina, where I underwent two MRI brain scans. This first scan with no caffeine in my system. Then I downed just one drink. Now my second MRI. This was my brain before caffeine. This was after. The difference was remarkable. It's like a 40% drop in the blood flow to your brain. So that's a lot. So before caffeine, with caffeine, the blood flow to my brain dropped Went down about 40%. 40%. 40%. Really? Yes. Why the drop? Caffeine blocks a chemical called adenosine, which controls blood flow to the brain. Add caffeine, blood vessels constrict, less blood circulates in the brain, and your blood pressure and heart rate go up. So if you skip your regular coffee, that surging blood can trigger a caffeine headache. It's like trying to get a fire hose to pump blood up through your skull. If you're a caffeine lover, your brain has actually changed. It now functions normally on caffeine. How much caffeine do I have to drink to change the physiology of my uh, brain? Not very much. Not very much? No. Like even a One cup of day? One cup a day will change your brain. Can you imagine that? You drink a cup of coffee and the physiology of your brain has been changed, mm -hmm. reduced by 40%. This has never happened to you, at least not from coffee, right? <laughs> at least not from coffee, right. What do you think about this? this? This drug that would actually change the physiology of your brain, um, and yet it's completely legal. Well, I, my, my opinion on coffee is I think it's a crutch. Um, and, and maybe it's just because I've never been in, addicted to that, and I do understand that it is an addiction mm -hmm. for some people. Um, but I just, you know, I've, I've never had to lean on that in order to start my day or pick me up during the day. I, I, I don't know if there's any other way to put it than it just becomes an addictive crutch. And I, you know, I, I know you and I've seen how you function. You have a lot of energy. So you don't, you don't need coffee to give you energy. Um, so, so we're seeing here, though, from this clip that it blocks the hormone adenosine. Mm -hmm. And this has some relationship with headaches. I mean, after a while, people can't get off of coffee because they get headaches. You want to explain that, Doc, why it's, we... It's a, de happened? it's a detoxing reaction also. So I've seen this in many, many patients when they come off of coffee. 
It's about a five to 10 day stint of headaches. So I have them drink water, literally a half a cup every hour through the day to wash through the system and cleanse the kidneys and the liver more efficiently to make the headaches much less and more quickly to go through that. But it does clamp down vas vasculature to the brain. So that's the mechanism by which it works. Mm -hmm. I'd like to read something, if I might, from a book I really enjoy called Councils on Diet and Foods that talks okay. about the effect of coffee on the body. Very okay. briefly, if I may. Please, go ahead. go ahead. This is said, the nerves of the stomach from coffee are excited. These convey irritation to the brain. We talked about that gut-brain connection. This is one of the ways it happens. And this, in turn, is aroused to impart increased action to the heart. So you get palpitations of the heart, commonly with coffee. And short-lived energy to the entire system. So there's energy that we feel is bursting, but it's not a true energy to the system. It's a stimulation to the nerves. Okay. And there seems to be a strength that's increased, but it's momentary. And it's from excitement, not from, str from strength inherent in the body. The intellect is aroused, so we're more hyper in our thinking, and the imagination becomes more vivid, so people want that to be seem like they're clearer, but the downside is it leads then to depression. And once depression occurs, what do we reach for? More coffee. That next cup of coffee. So it's addictive in the sense that we are stimulated, depressed, stimulated, depressed, and it continues because the adrenals can't support the cortisol we need to keep the energy levels that we require to function through the day. Now, will that cup of coffee alleviate the, that bout of, with depression, or will one ever get to the place where the depression is so severe that then I just need something else like an antidepressant? This is common. I call it one step forward and two steps backward. Ah. So it's constantly digging a deeper and deeper hole that we have something else to try to get out of when coffee is not enough. When coffee is not enough. Wow, we probably should have called this program when coffee is not <laughs> enough. <laughs> now, Lydia, now, <clears throat> as a, a um, ex-pharmaceutical executive, um, what is out there in terms of drug medication that would, for the person who might drink so much coffee and it's not really enough, now they need something else. What's, I mean, I don't, we don't have to get into the names, but are there certain things that people are looking for? Well, it, it, I, the number one thing would be an antidepressant. If we're talking about coffee bringing on um, depression and somebody is a chronic coffee drinker, it, it would lead to reason that they'd be reaching for an antidepressant chronically as okay, well. Okay, wait a minute. I just heard something. So we're saying that the number two commodity is coffee. The number one mm -hmm. drug prescribed in the marketplace is antidepressants. Is there a relationship? Is there a connection? Or is that just coincidence? Far from coincidence. We live a lifestyle that leads to depression. One of the keys is we have no anchor in our lives to the Lord. So we rely on ourself. And we do things in our lifestyle that tear our bodies down and we don't study nature and the Lord's laws in nature that allow us to follow His way to heal. And so we rely on our own ways. And our own ways always lead to degradation of health. And so it's essential that we start living a style of life congruent with how we're created. So it's wow. imperative for under, to us to understand physiology and how we're made and how, how we live supports how we're made, that we can live the life as true witnesses of our Creator. We need to really help to educate people, and really that is the purpose of this program. We want to make sure that you are equipped with as much information that we can share. That's why we bring on the experts to talk directly to you about what's happening in our bodies. Now, I think it's probably important for us to go, and we've heard from the doc, we've heard from you, and certainly you've heard from me, and we even heard from the news clip. But let's hear from the people who are out there on the street. What do they think about coffee? You know, it's so confusing. One minute you have a program that says coffee is helping you live longer, is, is, is fending off Alzheimer's. The next minute, a study just came out very recently said that 
people are dying within the first 15 years of the program when they have the amount of coffee that people are consuming right now. Mm -hmm. What is the truth? Okay. It's hard to tell, but we do know that this is confusion, isn't it? <laughs> and the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 30, 33 that God is not the author of confusion. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look and let's hear some of the confusion, if we will. Let's go to the streets. All right, I'm out here on the street. Sickness, and with me is? Duchess Sobovich. The Duchess, wow, what a pleasure. Where are you from? Northern Alberta, Canada. Canada, today I'm with the Duchess of Canada. Now, let me ask you a question. What do you think of caffeine? I think it's the only way some people get started, but it's really bad in large quantities. Really bad for you? Yeah, in large quantities. Oh, in large quantities. In oh, large your quantities. quality. So yeah. a little bit every few hours yeah. might be okay. In small amounts, yeah. Small amounts. Yeah. yeah, that's a good plan. Caffeine. A lot of people have an issue with caffeine. Do you love caffeine like I do? No. You don't love caffeine? No. no. What's wrong with caffeine? I don't It makes my heart rate fast. That's because it wants to get you going. No. Caffeine no. is good. Palpitations, no, not for Monique, me. Oh, Nick, you're no. confused. You need a new doctor. Well, maybe. Yeah, no. she needs a new doctor. She thinks caffeine's bad for her. No. <laughs> Tell me what you think about coffee. Uh, it's great in the morning, but uh, not at night. Mm -mm. Why would you say that? I cannot fall asleep for nothing. Well, sleep is a total waste of time. Why it would you want is. to sleep? It is. I mean, I'm a student. I got to stay up studying. Trying to conquer the world. <laughs> Dana does not sleep. She gets her milk and her coffee. Everything good. All right, so let's talk about this. Caffeine. What do you think about caffeine? Oh, man. That's, that's good. It's good. I used to be, yeah, I used to be addicted, man. Used to be? Would yeah. you quit? You I can't quit on me, man. I had a coffee this morning. But they're small. They're he small didn't quit. No, he didn't, didn't quit. quit. I think the evidence is overwhelming. Americans are addicts. As long as we can get our caffeine in the morning, the afternoon, late afternoon, evening, dinner time, just before bed, it's okay. And that's a good thing. Addicts are okay with me. Back to you, Rico. I've got to get some caffeine. I have got to get some caffeine. Well, I don't know what to say about it, you know? People, we see that people love it. They want it. In fact, as we heard from the very beginning, they need it. Mm -hmm. They need it, but do they really need it? According to what the doctor has shared with us, we don't really need it. It's really doing something to our body, putting us in a chronic state of depression and a chronic state of stress. And that much stress on the body constantly is tearing the body down. And it, we may love the taste, we may love the smell, we may even enjoy how it makes us feel. But ultimately, it's going to have its consequences, it's going to have its repercussions. Now, I wanted to just kind of uh, get a summary, if you will, of you know, the things we've been talking about. Um, I, I love the fact that you have a practice, and I always mm -hmm. tell our audience that you educate your patients. Amen. You educate them, educate them, educate them. And I'm sure you do it pleasantly, and you do it certainly intelligently. Mm -hmm. um, and you practice there in? In Medford, Oregon. Medford, Oregon, but that's not all that you're doing. You're taking this thing to the next step. You're starting up a some kind of a, a health center, a lifestyle center to deal with these chronic cases, right? That's right. We have one in Idaho, Open Door Ranch, and we have a second one we're starting in Medford, Oregon as well, Okay. under our umbrella of Open Door Life Institute. And it is a medical missionary school and healthcare center combined. Medical missionary. That means that you are sharing, because a lot of people don't know the term of oh. medical missionary, but if you think about a mission or a missionary, this is sharing the good news of the gospel and the word of God but combining it also with the physical healing that is needed, because they go together, don't Absolutely. they? Absolutely. So you're, and it's essentially, you are ministering or you are blessing both mind, body, and spirit. Yes. Making people whole. Absolutely. You know, friends, I believe that's exactly how Christ did it, and he would have us do the exact same thing. Rather than dealing with the, uh, the symptoms, dealing with the you know, the, the issues in such a way where we medicate them gets to the root of the problem. What is the cause? And I really appreciate mm. that about your practice and your ministry. Yeah. Now, Lydia, I'm going to, before I read, um, before I 
have you tell and share what you're doing because because you were a pharmaceutical representative or executive and um, you left that all alone you walked away from it because you didn't want to be out there just medicating people but you want to inspire people you want to you want to educate them and you want to have them be blessed yes. and you know there's something about um, what you said in the beginning of the program when you said I never used coffee and never needed it and I wake up feeling refreshed mm -hmm. and but there's a spiritual side to this and I want to just kind of read this text and have you comment in uh, with what you're doing now okay because I think it's a blessing okay thank you in, in Psalm 143 and verse 8 father bless your word in Jesus name we do pray amen in Psalm 143 and verse 8 it says cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning for in thee do I trust cause me to know the way wherein I should walk mm -hmm. for I lift up my soul to thee in 30 right. seconds can you tell us this whole hear thy loving kindness because I've heard something from you and it's heavenly thank you um, so now what I'm doing is I, I am a medical musician and I do let music be thy medicine which is a concert seminar that brings together music and health oh beautiful so people can hear the music of heaven and it actually ministers to their not only their soul but it, it has some medicinal properties to it, right? Yes. In fact, um, the clinical studies that I share show that in many instances that classical music has a beneficial effect that's superior to traditional drug therapy. Amen. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell you, friends, here's the thing. Instead of picking up that cup of coffee, why not get up in the morning and commune with your Lord? Take in the wonderful, wonderful, sweet savor of God's love instead of that coffee and allow yourself to hear him because if we're drinking coffee and reducing the amount of blood flow to the brain the question for us is can we hear his voice if our brains aren't functioning can we hear his voice well as always we want you to be healthy we want you to go from sickness to health mm -hmm. Amen. here's the health that we're sharing with you today try god Truly the best part of waking up is when we wake up with a zeal for life that only comes from the God of heaven. Now we have shared a great deal about coffee today. Now do I believe that people are just going to stop drinking coffee and make the change? Maybe some will. Some won't. I must confess, I used to love the smell and taste of coffee in the morning. Oh, However, when I lined up the effects of coffee versus the, the benefits, well, the harmful effects outweighed the benefits, and I had to make a choice. And my prayer, my hope for you today is that you'll also make a choice. Rico, do you really think information trumps addiction? Again, I say, my people are jittery and headachey for a lack of caffeine. Well, the Word of God says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge, Hosea 4, 6. And with that knowledge, we can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth us, Philippians 4, 13. We'll see. Well, that is our program for today, and I'd like to end it as the way I always do. Remember, 3 John 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. I'm Rico Hill. Be healthy. And I'm Blue Guy, in need of one more cup of brew. Maranatha. Oh, oh no. Oh, I got the shakes. Feeling jittery. Oh, I'm feeling weird. Oh, headache. Oh, oh headache. Too much coffee! <laughs>